Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this. This is Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be my update for my custom singles eyeshadow palette for September. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be my update for my custom singles palette. So in the month of August, I've been using these six shades combined with a pigment that I got from Sydney Grace. And now that I've tried those and I've done all the looks, I wanted to update you on how that went. Did the color story work for me? I'm gonna be showing you swatches as well as all five looks that I did with the palette. And then we're gonna to go to the floor and we're going to build a new palette together as well. So let's get started. But before we do that, I need to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like to chat about eyeshadow palettes on here, Essence and Catrice reviews and getting the use out of my makeup. Because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I am a snow angel. So if you'd like to join the snow angel club, then definitely click subscribe down below. So yes, custom singles. I had six single shadows and a pigment. So let's talk about the pigment first. The pigment I ended up using uh, in almost every look I did. And I'm also wearing one of the looks that you're gonna see a close up of in a minute that is just super basic, but I still wanted to, there was one shade in the palette I was like, I just wanna see what it looks like if I put it all over the lid because it's not something I usually do because it's something really, really bright. But yeah, this is from Sydney Grace, the pigment is, and this was my inspiration for the palette. So I got this as a gift and I wasn't really sure what to do with it, but then I swatched it and I was like, ooh, that's pretty. So that's why I decided to, you know, just really see what shades were going on when I swatched it and I kind of build the palette around it. So this shade, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is called Comforting Lights. I'm gonna have to look it up just to be sure, so I'll pop the correct name in the description box down below. And in the pan, it just looks like brown with green, but it's like a burgundy brown, so like a brown with a reddish undertone, and then some green, but also some more cool tone. So it's got a lot of dimension to it, and it is a huge jar for a loose pigment. It can get a little bit messy. What I've been doing is that I'm just shaking it into the cap, and then I pick it up from there. That's been the easiest way to use this. And that way it doesn't get everywhere. So you will see this in the swatch. And as I mentioned, I made that the star of the show in many of the looks that I did. So let me tell you what shades I pulled to complement that shade and tell you about the looks that I did. So I ended up picking a couple of lethal shades, a couple of more um, Sydney Gray singles, a Luxie Beauty one and a MAC one. And I felt that these were also perfectly representing the different undertones I saw in that shade when I initially swatched it and I was right. This shade from Lethal called Imago was stunning. It went exact, it's the exact reddish brown undertone that's going on in the pigment. So those two paired really well together. I ended up doing a look where I just popped this in the crease and then the um, pigment just bare on the lid. But I also wanted to see what would happen if I tapped the pigment over this as well. So I went back and I did another look where I did just that and I didn't feel it made a whole lot of a difference because this undertone is so close to what's already dominant in the pigment that I felt it didn't alter the shade all that much. Um, I also did a very basic look where I just put this MAC shade called Wedge in the crease and then the pigment all over the lid as well for a much more natural vibe, you could say. And then I believe I did pop this in like the outer corner just to smoke it out a little bit. Today, I'm not wearing the pigment, but I'm only wearing these two shades. This is a two shadow look with wedge in the crease. And then I also popped this shimmer from Luxie Beauty all over the lid and in the inner corner. And as you can see, this doesn't look like it's going to be a duochrome, but I have found this shade, it's called Starboy. It has gold and silver, and it can look a little bluish green depending what you put it with. So I feel that especially with this just on its own on my lid, it looks like I'm wearing five shades of shadow, but I'm really only wearing one shimmer. So I think that's great. Um, I've already mentioned Wedge a couple of times. This ended up being the exact perfect crease shade. It's the transition shade to, you know, blend out these like deeper things I've got going on, but it's also a crease shade that, that can just add enough definition 
of its own accord if I wear it by itself. So I felt that, that was very successful as well. I think I used it in every look I did because either I was wearing this by itself in the crease or I was using it in a look where I use it as a blend shade. And then I also use these like greeny teal shades quite a bit. Um, I remember that I think one of the first like green toned looks I did was putting this matte, which I've forgotten the name of, I'm afraid. I believe it's Sydney Grace. Yes, it's called Siren Call. So Siren Call from Sydney Grace. I popped it in the crease, but also all over the lid. And then I topped the Sydney Grace pigment on top. And that did change the undertone because the pigment has a green flip, but it's not overly green. And I really liked how this matte underneath just really gave a different quality to this pigment. And then this shimmer right next to it, which is another Sydney Gray shade, this is called Starfish. And that I'm using actually as a bit of liner, just to have a bit of smoky liner on my top lash today. But I also use it as a deepening up shade. I use it on the lower lash line. I've used it in quite a few looks, but I haven't used it as like a standalone shade because it is a bit dark. It's like a blackened dark green base. And then it does have a really nice amount of shimmer to it, which I appreciated. And then the final shade I popped in here was also by Lethal Cosmetics. And this is Lucid, which is like the best like turquoisey teal, like bright pop of something. I use it all over the lid mainly, but I very often, like I did a full on green toned look where I think... Yeah, I used the pigment only in the inner corner, but that look was really like these three shades. That was it, and I used this to blend it out and I didn't pull it in. So in the end, the way I feel about this little combo was just great. I mean, I think this was a very successful color story, even though you might look at this at first and go like, how is that gonna work together? But this is a concept that again, I've heard a fashion uh, influencer who I follow talking about. She's Dutch, so unless you know Dutch, you can't follow her. But if you are a Dutchie and you're interested in fashion as well, then Aided Doman here on YouTube is a, a channel I love watching. And she always says like, whenever I do like makeup or I don't know how to pair certain things, she'll take inspiration from like fabrics and patterns and like, color combinations that are already put together and then that's what she uses to create outfits with and i feel that because i stuck to the shades that were already in this pigment it always just came together because those shades can be blended together in one single product so i feel that that's why it worked i was very happy with all of the different looks i did very stunning indeed, but I'm also really stoked to be using these, this palette again, but this time with some different shades. Um, so let's just pop down to the floor and let me tell you what I want to do for my fall palette. I don't know exactly what shades I want yet, but I do have an, an idea because I definitely want to make this a let's, let's go into fall kind of palette. Welcome to the floor. We are going to be selecting some new shades, but not before I've put all of these guys back into their palettes. So let me do that first. So we've got an empty palette and what I want to do is to build myself a really good fall color story. That's just, it's going to be fall time. So I want to do something a little bit fall time, grungy, and uh, I actually got some new things here too. So these are the all the singles I got in my Sydney Grace mystery bag. So there's definitely a couple of things here that I'm like, ooh, that might be really pretty as well. but. I still want to show this in a like a makeup haul as well. So I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to pull that apart. Um, so I just think we need to start with a good crease shade. And something just tells me that I want to go in with that cocky from ColourPop. But I'm not sure whether I have anything like this anywhere else. So let me see in the other palettes that I've got going on here. 
No, I don't have any other cocky greens. So this, this is, I think, the first pick. And I definitely want to pick some shades from this blue-green-purple palette. Um, we all know I love my teals, so what's good? what do we have here? Forbidden from Color Rain, I think, so that may be pretty. But this shade is also eyeing me up, but I'm not sure what this is anymore. Oh, this is something I repressed, um, because this used to have a ColourPop shade in. So this is probably from a Juvia's Place palette. I think that may be pretty. I don't remember what that is anymore, though. <laughs> oh, well, but I like that. Mmm, this olive shade, maybe? I haven't used that in a while. This is Commission from Sydney Grace. Ooh, I like that. That's, that's some stunning fall colors. So then maybe we need to go into my Cool Tone palette, and we need to select one or two things from that to sort of round it out. This is Rainforest from Sydney Grace. So that can be our like deepening up shade, but what's this? This is Island Paradise. No, I want the other one because that's more gray toned and a bit murkier. And then in my fun pops of shimmers, maybe I can use one of the, oh yeah. Oh yes, oh yes. This is Sydney Grace's Red Chameleon. That is going to be stunning as well. And then I think maybe a multi-chrome or two, like some of the Cleona or Davina. This is Thalassic, but I think that's too similar to Red Chameleon actually. Maybe this one is. I never know what these are going to look like. This is Asteria. Ooh. This shade is speaking to me, but I'm not sure if I've used that before. So let me take some of these things out so I can get to it. Oh, this is Bloodline. This is one that I thought I was gonna use before, but then I chose Vermilion instead. But this one I think can go in here. And now the question is, will we be able to fit another one next to it or not? Oh, that won't fit. No, 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 no. So I can't fit another shade in here. I'm trying out different configurations, but it doesn't, they won't stick down. Oh no. So maybe I need to stick to this then. So this is what I've got going on in my September singles palette. Could I have picked some more things? I'm sure I can, but I think this is lovely grungy green tones. I think this is perfect for like post summer, early fall time. It's not too fall-ish yet. So I think I can I can definitely deal with this. So this is what I've got playing, what I'm going to be playing around with. Some multi-chrome, a duochrome, some good mattes, and some interesting shimmers. And this, what palette is this from? I don't remember. So that is what my current palette for the month of September is going to look like. Like I mentioned, I wanted to make this like a fall time color story. So by the time you're seeing this bit, I hope I managed to do that because I'll be filming the selection of the shadows after I film the sit down bit. Uh, so I hope I will be as successful this month as I was with the previous month. I really had fun playing around with those shades for sure. And I love doing these, even though they, these videos, but they don't get a lot of views. So make sure if you do, enjoy this content to like it and thumbs it up and doing all that because the more you engage with my videos the more it helps me to get my content out there and I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch another one of my videos so thank you so much much for being here hopefully you will like to stay to stay tuned for more and then I hope to see my next video have a good day everybody bye bye <music>